Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Eonix podcast, a podcast about software development, uh, ways of working, and a lot more cool stuff. Today with me in the studio, we have Parsa. Parsa, welcome. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have you. Um, thanks. A couple of weeks ago, you did a hack night with us about yes, uh, a topic that I found quite difficult to understand. It was... Uh, Domain driven, is it design or development? Design, design. So the DDD. Yeah, the second uh, second uh, thing that I talked about was BDD, which is behavior driven development. But yes. this is not the context. No, we're actually going to uh, do a separate podcast about that, which is also yeah, uh, sure. fun to watch. But the DDD was about the domain driven design, which is, it was very fun it was new to me and we did some coding and i i felt like a total noob uh so thank you for that uh, you're welcome i also feel new when I, whenever i'm coding in ddd don't worry about it oh well, that, that that's good i think I, yeah. I was not the only one um but uh let's start with the ddd can you uh explain to me what is the basic idea of doing it like that whatever that is uh in doing it DDD way, right? The, the DDD so style, the whole yes. uh, thing is that, uh, so yeah, we came up with the, not we, but the, in develop, developer world, the, we came up with uh, domains so that we can have separation of concerns, so that uh, we can have a component which is maintainable and reusable uh, regardless of outside perspective. So uh, if we have a repository attached to our domain, it can be uh, easily changed. Yeah. If we have a if you have an application layer which is connected to our domain, it can be it can be switched with a different application layer or use different like more application layers that we want to use uh, with our domain. So it's like a reusable component that uh, is uh, completely doesn't have any connection to to the outside world. Not it has a connection, but the the components inside do not have any connection to the outside world yes. in a sense of business logic. So yeah. So basically, I think we discussed that before. Like, if you're talking, uh, if you're looking at a like a normal style component in an enterprise environment, it has like a controller, services, and repositories. Yeah. And typically, your domain well resides in your repository layer. Uh, so basically, what you're saying here is that you're taking out all that domain and you're putting it in a separate. The business module. logic goes into the domain. Yes, it goes into the to the component called domain. And uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah. You're, you're separating it from the rest of the code, so you can use it from everywhere. From everywhere, yeah. That's that's the one of the functionalities that it has. It has many. Uh, uh, basically, um, design issue is normally like a first uh, first thing that like developers go after to solve. So it also DDD itself solves a lot of design issues. Okay, can you explain? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it might not be a good thing to say, but yeah, like, um, for instance, we have some rules uh, in DDD yes. that would uh, constrain developers to... It's always to, good to constrain developers. Yeah, constrain Don't developers to go outside of the of the rule that was uh, designed to uh, to make it, make it a DDD. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so basically what you're saying is that um, you want to have a model that is protective of itself. So, yes. so, so it, it, yeah. it, you don't want to have it abused later or yeah. you, you don't want to have future developers that maybe don't understand the domain too well at or remove stuff. Yeah, that so you have some rules, good. exactly. So you have some rules in place so that the developers can follow those rules without uh, without changing the things that uh, would uh, basically break break stuff or maybe make some design, uh, like code smells in, in your code. So you have uh, you have the concept of aggregate root, yeah. which is which is the, uh, the most important concept that is talked about in the DDD book. Uh, and all your business logic goes into the aggregate route. And then there are also some laws, technical and non-technical laws, as I also talked about in the presentation. Uh, yeah, so these laws, uh, uh, non-technical ones, make you be able to work with your with your colleagues in a way to make it easier for you to uh, develop uh, faster, better, 
uh, more productive and also technical stuff that would uh, my take on it is to constrain developers to not to yeah. not uh, I, I divert think, from the from the route. I think it's making sense, particularly if the developers also get some feedback about why that would be happening, right? Because, uh, well, I think it's typically it's it's okay to be constrained uh, yeah. as long as I understand why. So maybe add some documentation or stuff like that. Uh, yeah. So you don't want to, you don't want to see, okay. So you have, you have many, many components in the, in the domain. You don't want to see some business logic in one component and some business, some business logic somewhere else. Uh, it, it would make it nasty. It would make it very messy. Yep. Uh, so you want to have these rules in place so that, uh, everybody, could, everybody could follow. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, yeah, it's like, it would, yeah. there is no rules. You can but, do whatever. All right. And uh, if you take a look at organizational structure so you're taking out the domain so you're putting that in one package or central location probably yeah is it also uh construed in such a way or is it supposed to be construed in such a way that there's like uh, a team that maintains the domain and then there's teams that are using that domain or how, how does that typically work so suppose that you are i don't know creating another feature uh in your component which is not the domain but no. you need to have something change in the domain or you need to add some business logic to the domain. Would that be something that you as a team would be doing or would it be preferable to ask the domain team if such a thing exists to do that? Um, yeah, so if you're talking about the layers, who does what layer, that's a great thing about DDD. And any sort of domain design, Yeah, not DDD per se, uh, it, the great thing is that yeah, people could work on the domain and other people could work on the repositories because repositories repositories are separated from the domain. Yes, it's a it's a database thing. Is you work with the databases. Uh, an application layer could be the same. It's not that difficult to uh, like raise an application layer and connect it to our domain. But still, some other people could work on those, and you could stay focused on the domain. But at ING, we work on all of those together. So so basically. Uh, you have your own team, obviously, yeah. and you're probably doing it the DevOps way, uh, or at least the Scrum way, right? Scrum so way. You yeah. are responsible for the entirety of the thing. So basically, you're also in your team changing the domain. Changing the domain, yeah. So we come up with the domain, and then we first the design, and then we come up with that. Part of the design is the aggregate route. Uh, yeah. We come up with the design with the aggregate route, uh, what we want, what we need. And then, uh, yeah, um, we develop the domain and then we move to the to the um, repositories and also the application layer. Yeah, so basically your development also starts with defining a proper domain and the rest will follow, exactly. follow from The that. design is always the domain. The design, the logic that we want behind our uh, service Always it starts with the domain. So, exactly. Yeah. And is there like a cross team domain sharing? Because I think that the domain should be very close to reality. So I can imagine that because well, many teams are working at ING, you're also working on the same domain. Yeah, that's the that's the beauty of the DDD because you have separate components that can use each other. Yeah. So it's it's like we have. Okay, so a lot of people like uh, complain about the fact that. Uh, yeah, DDD design is very difficult. We have to come up with these all these uh, rules and then design it and then develop it. But then over time, when you have enough components, then, well, you want to come up with a new component, with a new service, and yeah. then you already have like 10 other components that you need in place, yeah. and then you can use them. Yeah. Whereas in, in a normal, typical way where in like in normal fact APIs where you call the application layer and the service layer and then the repository layer, if you want to use other components, we really can't. Because yeah, exactly. Yeah. And is there some kind of, uh, I don't know, guidebook or uh, some documentation as to which domain stuff is already there? Because I... Yeah, there's a, there's a, yeah, we have a... Because you, you probably first want to search like, hey, is there something like this already somewhere within the company that I'm working in this case, ING. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we have we have documentation. Well, what what do we have? What components do we have? What does what? Yeah. All right. So other teams can also use your our component and they are actually. And they are, yeah. yeah. All right. So it is actually working. 
It is actually working, yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, if it didn't work, then it would be a lot of trouble. Well, especially uh, for a bank like ING. Oh, I, but, uh, yeah, obviously, but it, it's, a, it's a choice to do it like that, right? So you can yeah. make a choice and then try to do it. And maybe at some point, well, you figure out, okay, it's not really, it's giving us some benefits, but there's also some drawbacks here. The drawbacks, I think, is like the learning curve. Yeah, well, we and have quite some people working at ING, and yeah. most of them are complaining about DDD. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say, yeah, there, there, there are some some drawbacks to doing it yeah. that way. Um, any advice that you could give those guys? Uh, it, it might seem difficult, but it's not really. Right. At, at first glance, it looks difficult because there are a lot of the rules, but then if you get like familiar with all those rules it's like super easy to come up with the design and uh, yeah follow the rules follow the follow the design exactly yeah so you feel it's like yeah you need to make an investment but it will definitely pay off pay off in the future uh, exactly yeah, yeah it's like that yeah yeah i think it's typically like that when you want to do uh, high quality software development then there's always drawbacks at the beginning right because you feel that you're exactly, going slow yes. and exactly yeah. uh, but you're doing that too to make sure that in the future you can still keep going fast yeah. uh, all right um, would you say that it is a useful approach in any kind of organization or is it mostly beneficial for the more larger enterprises um, not for not for probably not for startups no because it takes time yeah so to everyone. develop in DDD uh, for startups, uh, yeah, you need to be very fast with with what you do. Yeah. Uh, whereas in uh, enterprises, uh, enterprise companies, uh, banks. Yeah. Yeah. Is is it like a decision that you need to make up front? So let's uh, let's take that um, uh, the startup scenario. So suppose that you are a successful startup, right? So you yeah. started and you were going quickly, and then you got a lot of clients, and they, now yeah. you, now you got money, and you're a serious business. Uh -huh. Can you get into DDD after some time or is that like a very hard mm. wait thing to do? The bad thing about it is that when you read the DDD book, you will get a, get some idea about what to do, but yeah. but still it's it's not it's not enough. You need to you need to do the work. Yeah, sure, but let, let's let, let's assume that well, there is some person within this startup that actually knows how to do DDD, right? Uh, yeah. w would it be, uh, well, even feasible to, uh, well, to move away from your already existing source code and and get into the DDD style of working? Would would that would that work? It or? depends what the business wants, actually. So if if it's uh, better to use like microservices or some other design it's like not really necessary to use ddd in your in your are, are they conflicting styles can you not do microservices and ddd uh well you can do ddd with microservices but then you just uh you just uh, yeah deflecting from the whole purpose yeah but you can do yeah yeah. So uh, why why is, is that deflecting from the purpose? Because there's too too much business logic. Because microservices in, in uh, deal when you when we say microservice architecture, it means like we are trying to access different databases. So we have separate components, separate separate services, all accessing their own databases. Yeah. So uh, yeah, in in DDD, you want to have the domain. Separate is completely like they're they're not they're not really interrelated. You can do it, yeah, with microservices, but uh, yeah, the yeah, concept yeah. is completely different. Yeah, but then you would have like uh, a lot of aggregate routes, a lot small, of aggregate routes, and in, in different places, ones. and in, in different, different places. places. Well, yeah, and then uh, it also talks in the book. It also talks about how people work together, but then in microservices, it's mostly different paid. services have different teams that are not really correlated with each other yeah yeah all right yeah a lot of stuff to think about um all right so it is in your opinion if i hear correctly it, it is really a, a business slash architectural decision that you need to make do, do we want to go here because yeah, if yeah. you do that it also has implications for the rest of your architecture style which is making some sense but exactly <laughs> exactly yeah uh, but yeah what i hear you saying okay if you're doing ddd then Microservices don't make really a whole lot of sense. Um, 
uh, I can't say that it doesn't make sense per se because these are two different concepts. They are. Yeah. Uh, it's like, uh, what, what did they say? Apple and oranges? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that that yeah. obviously is the question, right? So yeah. if, you, if you're choosing DDD, what, what are the things that you cannot no longer do? Uh, but but I can mm-hmm. imagine that what you're just saying is that if you want to maintain your business logic in one place, then it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Then, a then, whole then, lot then, of sense then, to then, have market server. You can have dom- DDD in each service yeah, exactly. within the microservice, but then having it separated, like... Yeah, yeah and, and then I feel that the reusability perspective becomes a bit moot, right? Because if you want to... Well, yeah, yeah. Then, then all the different parts are very micro parts that... Yeah. You, you but then it wouldn't be a really microservice because each service would be its own entity then, and then you would create a DDD architecture for that service alone. Yeah. So it would be completely, yeah. All right. Um, but given the context that you're in right now, um, I think that you feel that DDD is a good way to go, right? So within ING, it's a very good decision. Depends on, yeah, exactly. Within ING, it's a good decision, yeah. even though a lot of people don't think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because they they see it difficult, not only difficult with uh, with how to develop DDD, but also they see it difficult from switching from one architecture to another. Because, uh, yeah, I think it's, that, that that always is difficult, right? So when you are accustomed to yeah, doing so it, a lot of resistance is because of that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but over time, it's an as you said, it's an investment over time. Yeah, yeah, but you feel that it would be useful to also maybe read the book and then things will fall into place more. Mm. Uh, it would fall into places more, but still uh, being being there, being in the implementation, actually you will realize that a lot of things that yeah didn't make sense in the book, now it makes sense. Yeah, because it's more so practical. Just, uh, more practical, yeah. Can we wave? Because then the light will go on again. Um, hey, great. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah. good. And and you probably need somebody in the team that really knows about the DDD. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, because uh, what I feel is that in some teams it feels really like something that is pushed on the team by an external force, which is typically like that. Uh, well, the, 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 the architects that are sitting, some, sitting somewhere, some, somewhere and somewhere, saying, yeah. hey, you need to do Business it like... Business management, yeah. Exactly. Uh, so I, I think it would help if every team has somebody that, uh, well, knows about DDD and also uh, likes to do it because that yeah. typically helps. If everybody is in resistance mode, then uh, that that, yeah. that will be difficult. Yeah, but uh, but uh, yeah, it's normally for businesses that don't necessarily take deadlines into account uh, or uh, companies that do so. Um, but. Over time, as I said, over time it's an investment, so it has a it has an exponential pace. So pace of development, I mean. Yeah. So at, at the beginning, you don't have a lot of components, but then you would design in DDD and create these components, and these components will use each other. And then before you know it, when you want to develop something, develop some service, you have all the components that you need. Yeah, and, and it's just and then you just use them. The the reusability part, because uh, as I said, the the thing that DDD does is maintainability, reusability, and uh, <laughs> there was one more thing that I forgot. Anyways, yeah, so it, it makes it more maintainable and reusable, and then you can, yeah, you can use the components that are already built. Yeah. Oh, I can really imagine that. That then you yeah. only need to make like the the controller and maybe a bit of a service, and then you're you're there, right? So you're there. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, it's like that. All right. Great. Well, I, I'm very happy that that you're excited about it uh, because yeah. uh, well. Uh, there are quite some people that I talk to that are a bit like me. I can see it. I'm uh, also not super excited about oh, it. Oh, come I, on. I see the future. I see the future <laughs> of it. It's like, it's a, it's a good investment. But yeah. it, it takes time. It takes time, energy, uh, uh, design decisions, yeah. All right. Yeah, I think, uh, well, more and more companies are doing it, right? It's becoming more of a buzz that these days. Uh, yeah. More and more, more yeah, people yeah, or, uh, and companies are, are deciding to go that way. Go so that way, I think yeah. it's a good way. Good thing to to also learn about these things. Yeah. Um, this book that you were talking about, who was it from? Uh, Eric Evans, was it? Yeah, we'll just look it up, and then uh, uh, we'll, I we'll, can, we'll, I can we'll, look we'll, it up right now. We'll add it. To I'm the, very to horrible the with names. 
Yeah. Evans, I think. Should have done that. Eric uh, Evans, yes. Uh, Eric, Eric Evans. Evans, yeah. But that's probably not a... Was he like the inventor of DDD or did, did he just write the book? Uh, what's the difference? Well, yeah. I, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think he's the, he, the, he's the first one who came up with it. I don't think anyone else came up with the DDD oh, okay. before. Oh, great. So this is the one to read. There is always... Uh, yeah, there is. Uh, you have to take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Yeah, uh, it is like a lot that. of musicians, a lot of movie makers. They came up with their own stuff, but then yeah, yeah, it is like that, right? So yeah. this guy was probably inspired by somebody else. Or no, I don't want to offend anyone. Right no. now. Let, let, let's not do getting that. getting a lawsuit from Eric Evans. That would be my, the highlight of my career, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, w- that would be good. Yeah. All right, great. Uh, thank you so much for yeah, sure. sharing your knowledge. It was uh, it, it, it was good to talk about it. Uh, I yeah, feel that right. I understand it a bit better now. And uh, trust sure me, I don't even understand it. Oh, <laughs> you, you do understand do. it, man. Sometimes I believe I do, but I really don't. Yeah. Nobody does. <laughs> it's it's good. All right. Um, so thank you everybody for listening to the podcast of today. Uh, if you find these uh, topics to be interesting, please follow us on all our channels. And for now, take care and see you later. Bye. Thank you.